Hey everybody, this is Anne and welcome back to Painting Big. So today we are going to talk about triadic color schemes. This is kind of piggybacking on the video I did and PDF I did last month about how to think about colors and complementary color schemes. So triadic schemes are what you might think. They're triads, so they're trios of colors and the primary one is red, yellow, and blue seems obvious, right? And likewise, the secondary one is green, orange, and purple. In addition to that, we have tertiary triads, which are things like red, orange, plus yellow, green, plus blue, purple. So that's a little bit of a weird one, right? Anyway, I'm going to go forward with this. I'm going to show you examples of all of these. I'm going to talk about how they kind of maybe push against the limits you might think would be in place and things that you can do to not make these boring, right? Because a lot of people would look at red, yellow, blue and go, well, that's kind of boring. They really aren't boring at all. Just like with complementary colors, you have a lot of leeway. All right, let's get into it. Alrighty, let's go. Primary color schemes. First, let's whip, whip out the color wheel. I have, I have two. We only need one. Alright, so let's just go back over what I was originally telling you, this time with visual aid. So what we got, I'll just put on my glasses just for the sake of it. What we got is we can look at the back of this and actually get a little guide here. You can see it's got the, the strong line up and down is complementary. Let's get close so you can see. Um, it also has, what do we have there? Triadic. So there we are, right there is the triadic color schemes. So if we have, as we do now, our uh, triangle there, the triadic uh, pointing at red, then if we follow that, tri that uh, then if we follow the lines of that triangle around, we will see that it goes to blue, and then it also goes to yellow. So red, yellow, blue, our primary triad, orange, green, purple is our secondary, and then just as I mentioned, there's a place for these intermediate shades, right? The red, orange, red, violet, blue, green. Um, you can line up your little triangle with any of them as well. So if we move this over, let's say we shove it over here. We've got our triangle. Now our triangle points to red, orange, yellow, green, and blue, violet. All right, so we can use this tool to find various triads. Let's show you some examples. We're gonna jump right in. So first, a couple of examples of red, yellow, blue that are extremely obvious. Um, we've got our mouseling here. She's got her red and her yellow lantern. Technically her fur also counts as yellow and the pink in her ear also counts as red. Uh, she's got blue eyes that are actually pretty, pretty vibrant. So you can see them popping out. Um, and technically those might count as an accent color. I also used a blue gray. Uh, for the lantern here to give it a little bit of something extra. So red, yellow, blue, very, very obvious. Mostly, mostly a red and yellow scheme with, with a blue accent, but you know, same thing, same thing. When you, when you used two colors as the mains and you use a, another color as the accent, it's still a red, yellow, blue color scheme. You're just using one of these. You're just using one of these as the accent. Here it's the opposite, right? I'm using blue and yellow with red as the accent. So the red hair, the red bookmark, and the red cutouts on the dress. Uh, the skin I also went pinkish with. I actually started with much more golden color and realized that once I realized I was going with uh, the cream, which is also kind of a yellow, right? It's a yellow white. Once I realized I was going uh, golden blue and the cream white that uh, in the dress, I realized I wanted a more of a rosy skin tone. So once again, it's, it's red, yellow, blue, but we've got some different things, right? The red hair is a little bit orangey. The skin tone also technically kind of an orangey pink, right? Uh, but then we have those bright pops of red in the accents. So those both count as pretty evident. Uh, this one's a little bit more subtle. This is a character I did for a role playing game. Um, and She's definitely red, red and she, you would say she's probably a red and black, right? Except that her black is highlighted up with a very blue color. And I've used that color also on things like the hilt of her sword. This is the same color. So the highlight of the black is the same color as this blue color. So I brought in the blue on the black and then I also have bright gold accents, which is definitely yellow, right? 
So, yes, you could call this a red, black, and gold color scheme, maybe, but it's still red and yellow. The red and gold is still red and yellow, and I threw blue into the black. So this is a more subtle way that I can throw um, that blue color in there, right? And the NMM gold is technically gold, but gold is a yellow metal. It still counts as yellow when it comes down to it. So that's a little bit more sneaky, working uh, working one of these colors of the triad into the leather itself, uh, which is itself black. So you can do that. You can sneak like red into a highlight or a shadow. You know, you could sneak yellow into a highlight. You can use the blue to highlight black, things like that. You can also use a blue or blue gray to shade white, um, right? So, and I did that actually with this white. So there's all sorts of ways you can kind of mess around with this and make a red, yellow, blue color scheme that looks very interesting. Now let's go to a really faded out one here. This is a different way to do it and it's by muting everything a lot. So it's very, very grayed out. Um, even the gold has been kept pretty pale as far as the yellow of it. Uh, and what we have here is we've got our blue. Our red is technically this reddish leather color. It's saddle brown from uh, from MSP bones and then we've got the gold to be our yellow I also went and put a little bit more yellow on the accent there and the inside of the lantern and of course her hair um, is that pale gold color so this still counts as a very very muted red blue yellow scheme so always remember you don't have to deal with bright just because just because a color scheme might look boring you don't have to go bright with it now here's um, one thing I wanted to talk about is with a red, yellow, blue scheme or a primary triadic scheme, you can choose any two of the colors for a color scheme and you'll be fine. So when you're thinking about green, orange, purple or red, yellow, blue, if you just want to go red and yellow or you just want to go orange and green, you can absolutely do that. You can drop that other color out. Um, this is a, a model that's a definitely, you could say, it's more of a red and yellow, right? The only, where, the only place that blue makes uh, its way into this model, can you guess? is that I mixed blue into the gray here of her uh, her NMM steel weapons. So you can see it maybe a little stronger here, but there is definite blue added into the gray here. So I, I very subtly made a, a reference to the triadic, but in general, this is more of a red-yellow scheme. And if I had just kept these gray, they would have been just fine. It's just that adding the blue adds a kind of a subtle color component. It makes that maybe that gray look a little bit more like it belongs with the model because the eye just perceives that triadic relationship. So, and this is also a little bit of a subtle one because the red here is actually a magenta. Uh, it's a purple red and it looks warmer because I've glazed this yellow over the top of it. That's also the same uh, color that I've used to like shade the skin tones and give blush to the face and the ears. So all of those, um, all those pieces uh, are the same red, which is actually more of a violet red. All right, that's our red, yellow, blues. Obviously, I really like red, yellow, blue. I work with it a lot. Um, I really enjoy the triadic color schemes in general. I do also like me some green, orange, and purple. So let's talk about our most obvious um, example. He's quite large. There we go. So there's our, our rock troll. He's got uh, amethyst gems on his back and he is very green. Uh, you can pretty obviously see our green, orange, purple on this. Let's just get a little closer. So obvious green, obvious purple, and then the, I chose to bring in the orange tones to suggest a skin color. Um, with green skin tones, it's often uh, nice to uh, suggest the rosiness that would usually be like around a human skin tone, like around the lips, the nose, the ears. So that's what I did with this guy. I just went a little bit more obviously orangey. Uh, so that you can, you know, it, I got that triadic. The other places I'm working in orange are, of course, browns, if you remember, are muted oranges. So the bone here um, with the leather and the fur here and the, the kind of really dirty loincloth, all those things uh, being the orangey browns, they all count as oranges as well. So it's very much a secondary triadic color scheme on this model and the eyes are orange as well. So let's take that. Now my other examples are, are a little bit more different. So this is very much a green and purple color scheme. Um, ignoring the water and just looking at the figure, I've got two shades of green and I've got this reddish purple that I'm using 
as an accent, right? So if we had to really, really call this uh, color scheme, it's obviously, it's, it's more like a green and gold and white, but then it's got that purple component. So you could say it's a green and yellow, green, yellow, white color scheme with purple. You could call it that. And, it, and you would be pretty right. Sometimes I tend to look at the gold. Sometimes I use the gold as an actual color component. Sometimes it's just kind of there. Here it helps because it's a complement to the purple. So it actually works better that way because the purple is present. So that's why I kind of call this kind of a green and purple color scheme. And then the yellow is kind of incidental and just helps to heighten the intensity of the purple. Um, but so a little bit different, right? A little bit, little bit uh, not as obvious of a, of a secondary triad, but there it is. So let's do another odd one here. Here is Ms. Witch. She... Um, I'm going to talk about something really quick. And so we can have a green, orange, purple color scheme. But obviously this purple is not really a true purple, right? It's actually more of a blue violet, uh, more like an indigo color. It's, it is, in fact, icy violet from uh, the Bones line of Master Series paint. Uh, so what I'm doing here is I am taking one of the components, green, orange, or purple, and I'm actually sliding them to the tertiary on the color wheel. So for example, um, okay, this should be a green, orange, purple. Instead of using that purple, I slid it to a blue purple. I could also have slid it to a red purple. So when you're doing any color scheme, even a tri primary triadic, like say you're doing a red, yellow, blue color scheme, you could, instead of your red, go to a red, orange. You could, instead of your red, go to a red, violet, and it will still work with your blue and yellow. So that's something you can do if you think the normal red, yellow, blue, or the normal orange, green, purple are a little bit too predictable. You can slide one of your colors to the tertiary right next to it, and it will still work. This indigo color still works. I've used a dark version for the back of her cape and her hat, and I've used a uh, lighter version, obviously, for the, the cloth. And then we've got traditional orange and traditional green um, here on the model as well. And I used the same orange on the pumpkin as I used to highlight her brown leather, her staff, and her hair. So pulling all of that together and making those things uh, be allied with the orange and the pumpkin. You could call the green just an accent, and that's fair, since it only appears there. It's really there to complete the triad. So more so, this is a purple and orange color scheme. That's a bit muted. Um, and of course, this isn't a true. That's a good thing to point out. It's not really a true bright orange and purple, is it? not even a bright orange and, and uh, violet. It's, uh, it's muted. It's a muted grayed out violet and a grayed out, browned out orange. So then let's talk about, let's, let's show you guys some of the big ones I've got. I know I normally concentrate on role-playing game minis, but I want to show you this works on the big stuff too. And I'm stealing my husband's stuff to show you because, well, he had the best examples. <laughs> So here's some big stuff. Also, I just, I know you guys like to see pretty minis. So, all right, here's his goblin. This is a big bust. You can see him with my fingers on it. This is definitely a, a green orange color scheme, right? Just like my troll. So uh, David's really good at this also. He's, he's got a beautiful orange coming in here on uh, this guy. This guy's kind of peering at the coin in his hand. He's got a great face. Um, but he's definitely using greens and oranges. This is a green-orange secondary color scheme, right? But if you turn it around, you can see his bag. And what color is that? That's purplish, isn't it? So even though the main character is green and orange color scheme, David still snuck some purple in here. And I think there's a touch of it in his hair as well. So he did, he did put the purple in. It's just hiding. It's very subtle. It's not like slapping you in the face. You have to look for it. So there's an example. So really, my point here is these color schemes don't just work on little stuff. They work on big stuff. They work on everything. Artists all over the place use them. If you look at your favorite paintings, you're going to see complementary schemes. You're going to see triadic schemes. You're going to see that kind of thing. This is primary. Um, so we've got a red, yellow, blue color scheme here. The blue is shifted a little bit on camera, it's shifted a little bit toward purple. Um, in real life, it's more, it's probably because he's using an ultramarine, which has a touch of violet in it. But you can still see the bird and her skin has a lot of rosy tones in it. 
She, he have, has some outright red here. And then he's got the gold chasing and the gold armor and then the blue cloth. So very much a red, yellow, blue scheme, but it's also got a lot of other stuff going on, right? So the bird has, you know, it's got that pretty white transition. It's got, it also shades down to blue on its back. You know, he's using white to draw attention both around her face with the hair and to the bird. Um, and uh, it's just a, it's a generally beautiful model. You can see more blue. There's your red, yellow, blue on the back. Uh, he's used red for these little gems to repeat his primary color scheme around the model. We've also got a lot of black in there, but it doesn't really matter. Um, you know, it's just kind of there as filler and, and everything else is brought up around it. So one last thing, tertiary. Tertiary color scheme. I only have one little representative of our tertiary color scheme because it's less common. Um, and that is my Knoll. Knoll Pirate. Yay! And Knoll Pirate is red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. So we've got the red, orange of the cloth. We've got the yellow, green of the fur because it's olive. When you, when you, uh, whenever you see an olive, um, olive color, it'll be a yellow, green. And then, of course, this, this is done with an indigo color. So a blue purple and, uh, and you can see how those colors really work well together. In addition to just the kind of more neutrals. I mean, technically this is gold, but I tarnished it down with a lot of Browns. Uh, this is a light Brown cause I wanted something to show up against the fur, but it's also pretty stays pretty neutral. Um, and so that is an example of a tertiary, uh, triadic color scheme, which I probably should use more cause I really like those colors together. But, uh, but yeah, so there we go, everybody. There is our triadic and, uh, let's just back up and put everybody in frame. That concludes our summary of triadic color schemes, um, both primary and secondary plus tertiary, plus all the examples. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing all the examples and that they gave you ideas for kind of how to think about colors again, because not all of these are straightforward yellows, greens, purples, and blues. Um, maybe inspire you to pick up a color wheel of your very own so that you can play around with ideas. And uh, yeah, I will be doing a $2 PDF on this for my Patreon. So patreon.com slash painting big. Um, I'll be doing a companion PDF. I'll have some pictures of this stuff on that PDF and I'll be recapping what I've done in this video. All right. And uh, in the future, maybe we talk a little bit about color mixing. I don't know. I've got so much yet to come on this color theory series, but we'll get to it. We'll get to everything. All right. Thanks so much, everybody. I hope you're enjoying the series and I will be back at you soon. This is Anne signing off.